YouTube, I'm back at the Los Quintes and I am in the section for the meat. I have my little ones with me today and there's my friend the butcher, he's a sweet guy. And I have my little ones and just getting some meat to do the barbacoa. It's pasta. Si. He just asked me that I want my meat cut and I told him in four pieces. So, as I, as you guys can see, I'm at the wonderful Los, Los Quintes again. Tomorrow I will be making barbacoa. Actually, it's going to be today. So, I'm going to make the barbacoa today and show you the process. I think I need some laurel the ojas. Ah, there we go. I need this to go with it. So, this is going to be some of the things. That I, I brought some of the things earlier, but there's my lard. This is the salsa, of course, and some chili cascabel, cilantro. But you'll see all of that when I make my babacua tomorrow. And this is some of the fresh meats that they have to offer. Very good selection. Very, very fresh. I love coming here for my meats. The, the food is just awesome. You can't beat the prices. And it's pretty much um, very popular market here in my city. I don't know if they have another store in other locations, but I do know this is wonderful, wonderful. Uh, it's just a lot of great food here. And then we have the my favorite tilapia. So anyways, I'm just getting the guy to cut me some meat. I'm not here today for the other meat that you saw in my last video. So we're just going to get this stuff done. And there are my kids again being so great and patient waiting for me and I lost one and here he is that's Mr. Hobby we call him Hobby for short so anyways I'm just getting some goodies so we can do the barbacoa I hope you try this recipe at the end of it it is wonderful and it's muy rico so I'm just gonna just buy my time walk around give you a little visual of the store but it's 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 pretty much a lot of people like to call it the Mexican store but I would say it's probably a Latino maybe Hispanic I'm not sure but they offer great varieties from every culture I've seen some Honduras Salvadorian things also so and oh my gosh I don't know how I forgot to show you guys this if you ever ever stop please come by the store look at the wonderful wonderful selection they have on the cheese oh. I could just lay in there and eat all that cheese all day. I love cheese. So anyways, um, you remember this if you saw my last video for the guaditas. Um, here are some of the fresh meats they have. I think this is the carnitas de puerco, the barbacoa de borrego, y barbacoa de res. And this is the chicharro. So anyways, we have some more people coming in the store. So. They're looking at me like, what the hell is she doing? So anyways, I'm going to finish up this, and I'll get back to you when I make my baba kwa. Hey guys, I'm back, and today I am cooking a Mexican, I guess they call it a Mexican breakfast, but it is a very authentic, or at least I learned it from the recipe from a Mexican lady that used to sell it in the area I used to live in a few years ago. Um, I think she still sells it, but... This is her recipe. Maybe I'm not exact, but let me tell you, my sister-in-law, my husband's um, sister, her family, everybody agrees it tastes exactly like hers. I think it tastes exactly like hers, and it's called Baba Qua. Now, I'm probably not pronouncing it right because I told you before, my Spanish pronunciation is not that great. Yes, I'm married to a Mexican guy, but nevertheless, nevertheless, I... Don't speak as much Spanish as I should, and I probably should practice more. But anyway, that's for another show, or another video. Anyway, it's called Barbacoa. I believe that's how you pronounce it. So here's what you will need. You will need some cachete, and that's the meat that I brought earlier, and the video I brought from the Mexican store, the Los Puentes, or the Mexican grocery store, Los Puentes. You will need salt and clavos. Clavos is pretty much um, whole cloves, and you don't really want to use a lot, and this may be a little bit too much, but I'll see once I start it. I won't put them all in at one time when I blend it up with the chili peppers, because 
you may not need that much because they are pretty strong for these fellas to be so little. So these are the clavos or whole cloves. They look like little nails. So I'm going to be using this, of course, like I said, the cachete, the salt, the clavos, and this is the meat that I am using. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is. I'm just going all out of focus with this. But anyways, this is what I'm using. I think it is called, yeah, beef chuck roast boneless. I brought that from another supermarket, Sam's Club. I think that's the name of it, Sam's, Sam's Wholesale, Wholesale or Club or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, that's what I'm using to mix with the cachete. And I'm using chili cascabel meat tenderizer because the meat can be pretty tough. The cachete in the, the roast is not that, but I like mine like that. So anyways, hojas de laro. I think earlier I said the laro de hojas, but there's my Spanish again. And we're going to need some all, all vegetable shortening. Yeah, shortening. That's what we're going to need. So anyways, this, um, they usually, it's traditionally served on a Sunday for breakfast. And sometimes you'll go into a restaurant or, um, a little, I wouldn't say a cafe, but if you go inside or know a Mexican eatery, and go on Sunday morning, and I promise you, barbacoa and menudo are probably one of the two top items that they sell on Sunday morning. I will be making a menudo video later, or you can request it, and I'll make it sooner. But anyways, let's get started. First of all, we're going to take the chili peppers, and we're just going to take these and boil these for about 10-15 minutes until they're soft. Let them cool down and we will begin to process this. Okay, here are my chilies. I have them in water and they are about to boil. I've taken them and I de-seeded them even though some of the seeds are left, but that's okay. But anyways, I'm just going to let this boil for about 10-15 minutes, let it cool off, and we'll move to the next step after Okay, that. I'm back and here are the chilies once they've cooled off. I'm going to put these in the blend blender, drain these because sometimes you have a little piece of the husk or shell left of the chili peppers. So we're just going to put this in a blender, blend them up, and um, we're going to add the clavos and the salt. So let's get to that and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I have my puree or pretty much the mix from the chili peppers, the chili cascabel. There it is. And I'm just, I have my meat, I've washed off, and we're just going to put these together like this, the cachete and the roast that I showed you earlier. I can't remember what part it was, but we're just going to put this in just like this, and we will add the meat tenderizer and a few of the hojas de Lara. So, I'll be right back once I get that in. We're probably going to add two of the hojas de Lara in because these are pretty strong as well as like the clavo. You really don't need a lot. A lot, a little goes a long way. So I'm going to put two of these in about maybe hmm, two tablespoons of the meat tenderizer and maybe um, probably about a half a cup or a little under half a cup of the all the shortening, all vegetable shortening. So we're going to do that and then that's pretty much it because I've already added my salt and the clavos in while it was blending. Okay, I have added the water in with the chili sauce and the lard and the hojas de lara. I added one there and I added one here. You probably can't see it because of the water. And we're just going to let this cook for about 12 hours and I'll be back. Okay, so this has been cooking the barbacoa for about 10 hours and... This is what it looks like. It's already broken down into pieces thanks to the meat tenderizer. I'll show you. This meat is very, very, very soft now. The cachete, like I said, is a little bit harder to break down. But I'm just going to let it simmer for a while. And it is on low already, so I'm okay with that. And I did go back and add a little water into the pot because it was getting kind of low. You don't really have to worry about the, losing the flavors because the chili peppers, the chili cascabel that was that I added and the the vegetable shortening pretty much helps everything stay flavorful so you don't lose a lot of, you know, dilute the flavor or taste or seasoning when you put water into the pot. 
So this is done. I'll be back to plate it and I'm going to warm up me some tortillas on my pan or a griddle pan and add some cilantro and onions and all that good stuff. But I'll show you that when I plate the dish, of course. So this is the barbacoa. Again, my pronunciation. I wish I had two hands to show you, but once I get it on the plate, I'll show you how tender the meat has got. Okay, I'm back and the food is ready. The barbacoa is ready. So that's why you see me with my tortillas now. And um, I'm just flipping them over periodically. And um, this looks okay. And I'm just gonna plate this. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you that one was, okay, we'll turn it off. I am going to show you the meat and then I will plate it. But I just wanna let you see how very nice the meat came out. The uh, cachete or cheek meat and the, I forgot what it was, the roast or shoulder or whatever I had, I showed you earlier in the video. So anyway, that's the only meat that I like to use. Those two combos of the meats, I love to use those. So I forgot right now, because I'm so used to seeing it in the store the cut of it but anyways I will show you the cutting the uh, meat once I take it out of the pot and then I will come okay, back and, and here it. is the meat all ready to go I don't think you can get a good I can get a good shot of it but it's really really super super addicting it's very delicious and um, you don't have to do a lot so I'm just going to plate this and I'll be right back Okay guys, I've plated everything. I have my salsa verde. I showed you the brand, I think, in the other video, but if not, you can use any type of salsa. It doesn't have to be green, but it's just my personal favorite. I like mine with sour cream, cilantro and onions, and some lime. So here it is, but remember when you take this out of the water or the mixture that you cook this in, strain it and remove the hojas de lara or the leaves, I think it's called bay leaves right bay leaves in english so here you go i hope you try this it's a long process but my 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 it is so worth the wait and i'm just going to eat these with my tortillas and make it a little tacos while i'm going along thanks have a great day